Well, hello again and welcome to the VK6CS Amateur Radio Channel. Uh, for some time now I've been toying with the idea of building a uh, HF power amp, HF linear amplifier, and I thought, um, yeah, okay, is it going to be valve or is it going to be solid state? And then I thought, well, mm, solid state amplifiers, bit 21st century for me. Um, I'm more uh, more old school. I grew up with valves. Um, I thought, well, you know, initially three five hundred Z maybe they look really nice, nice glass glass valve glowing away when you fire it up. Um, and then I thought, well, what sort of output power do I want? What sort of what, what sort of prices are these valves? And I started looking around and thought, shall I use you know a pair of valves, you know eight one ones or you know five seven twos or whatever these things are called. Um, sort of things that you find in, uh, you know, Meritron amplifiers and Yaesu amplifiers. Um, two valves, four valves, and I thought, no, I don't, I don't want to get involved in multiple valve um, amplifiers because of the, the equalising components, and it makes the whole thing more complicated. You can't actually see me gesticulating, which is uh, probably a good thing, but um, I'm actually waving my arms around and my hands around as I'm speaking here. Um, anyway, I decided to make a valve amplifier and one valve. Okay, so a little bit of research showed me that the biggest bang for buck around is the uh, um, the, uh, the new old stock GS35B uh, Russian metal ceramic power triode. Uh, you know, for what per dollar uh, they're unbeatable. So um, I thought, okay, let's make one of those. Fortunately, now there is going to be something happening in a second, so stay tuned. Fortunately, um, it's not very complicated to make one of these amplifiers. Uh, HF triode power amplifier has very little in it. I'll uh, I'll see if I can show you. Hopefully, hopefully this will focus okay. All right, so you need a high voltage supply. Um, in this case, we're going to have plus. 2800 volts. I should keep it reasonably happy. Um, and feed that in through a HT line down through an RF choke to the anode of our triode. There we go. It's got the cathode in there as well. It's not a not a directly heated valve. It's got a separate cathode. It's called a triode because it's got three electrodes. I'm trying to keep this in focus actually. And uh, I might be I might be a little too animated. It might be trying to refocus a little too frequently. So apologies for that. Hopefully it will settle, or I will. It's called a triode because it's got three electrodes: anode, grid, and cathode. This is just a heating filament. Um, my terminology may vary between anode and plate and valve and tube um, uh, because I'm English and uh, I was brought up on valves so apologies for, I'll apologise for that in advance. Okay so we've got an RF choke, um, got high voltage uh, plus 2800 volts coming in there we'll decouple our HT supply with a nice high voltage decoupling capacitor um, we'll couple the RF output through a similar capacitor into a fairly straightforward run-of-the-mill Pi tank circuit. Have a variable capacitor. On each side of the coil. like that, that would be tune, that would be load, uh, this capacitor would actually be, uh, sorry this inductor would be switched, I'll just show it as being you know one switch but there'd actually be a switch that would uh, going from band to band change the, that inductance there. Um, just to be on the safe side you'd have an RF choke between the output and chassis like that and the idea of that is that um, if this capacitor goes short, remember we've got very high voltage there, if this capacitor goes short the DC will go straight through that, through this RF choke to ground and trip off the high voltage supply, or blow the fuse, uh, one or the other. 
and um, it will it will ensure that um, there's no high voltage gets to the antenna just in case you've got uh, any wildlife uh, sitting on the antenna or uh, you might have a, an enraged neighbor perhaps might be trying to watch television while you're trying to operate your high power amplifier could be trying to pull your antenna system down and uh, if you had a if, if this went short you wouldn't want them to uh, be uh, be vaporized um, come to think of it that's that that that, that might be advantageous leave this um, leave this out um, now the grid is grounded goes to ground these little these little brush symbols just mean ground chassis connection and uh, it's a grounded grid amplifier so it's cathode driven it means we put our RF drive into the cathode the way we do that is we have on our cathode we have a bifilar or bifilar don't know how it's pronounced RF choke and that goes to a heater transformer the other side of that transformer there is our mains voltage now <clears throat> this heater transformer is providing in the case of this particular valve 12.6 volts AC at uh, about 3 amps I think it is and that just runs around here through that filament and heats the valve um, heats the cathode so that uh, electrons start uh, are happy to uh, to leap off it. Now um, the RF, because the cathode is connected to this side, that filament connection, we feed our RF in onto that leg there, like that. We'd have another one of these capacitors across there. Actually, that would be there, but it's easier to draw there. It's across those two points there, pretty close to the valve. And what that does is it, it, it keeps the potential, uh, uh, RF potential, across the filament uh, the same. So basically, it's, it's shorting out the RF across the, uh, across the valve filament. These would be something like 0 0.01 microfarad, the value of these uh, capacitors. <coughs> this uh, bifilar wound choke provides a nice high impedance to the RF so when the RF comes in through this capacitor it goes good heavens there's a brick wall this way I'd better go this way and it uh, it uh, goes into the uh, it goes into the valve to be amplified um, now we have some decoupling on this side of the choke so if any RF does get through these this 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 high impedance it just goes straight to ground it doesn't bother anything else on this side uh, now because we've got the cathode connected to this side of this filament um, choke we have our cathode bias arrangement on here and it might just be a xenodiode that would also be decoupled these could be 0.01s 0.1s same on the other side, Some, something like that, uh, this value here. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, that would go to our plate anode current meter, which will go to our high volt negative rail. You see that? Yeah, okay. Like that. Now, these valves are quite low impedance input, apparently. So I thought probably the easiest way to uh, run the input would be to have an L arrangement. Have an inductor there, which would be connected to that capacitor. And because it's a low impedance, this L matching arrangement would have a capacitor on that side of it variable capacitor uh, to ground. If that was a high impedance that capacitor would be there. You'd have another arrangement there similar to there so you could switch that inductance as well and uh, for the different bands to operate on the different bands. So that's uh, that's pretty much that. Hang on, let's just see if I can get all that in there. Yeah, just about. <coughs> okay, so 
Um, what this is doing here, this is in a diode, is um, it's providing a positive cathode bias. Because remember, this is our our um, cathode current path through the uh, through the filament choke, or our plate current path, if you like. Um, whatever the value of this uh, this diode is. So supposing that was, I don't know, plus 15 volts. Effectively what, what that is doing is providing a negative 15 volt bias uh, to the grid. Because you've raised the cathode voltage by plus 15 volts. So the cathode is 15 volts higher than the grid. The grid appears 15 volts uh, negative to the cathode. And it's a way of providing a negative bias to the valve without having a negative bias supply and it's really um, you know keeps it nice and simple and I had thought about replacing this Zener diode with a uh, sort of variable voltage regulator arrangement so I could actually adjust that bias from something like I don't know 5 to probably 5 to 30 volts maybe 5 to 35 volts or something like that just to um, so I can adjust the bias and just see where uh, see where the valve is happiest um, okay, so what do these bits and pieces look like? I hear you cry. Well, fortunately, I've got most of these bits, so I can show you. Um, where should we start? Okay, well, <clears throat> here and here. So we've got HT decoupling capacitor. Is that staying in focus? I bloody hope so. And our RF coupling uh, capacitor are high voltage types, and I'll be using uh, I'll be using two of these. They're uh, another Russian component, 3,000 um, uh, 300 picofarad at 10,000 volt working, and one of those will go there to decouple the HT, and the other one will go there to couple the RF to the uh, to the tank circuit and keep the DC off the tank circuit. So that's those two. I've got two of those for that. Uh, I've got the uh, anode or palate choke. And you can see that that is a close wound choke. It's not, um, it's not a, a lump wound. Hang on. Let's see if I can find my pencil. I'm leaning around a tripod here, so I do apologise for this peculiar... If this looks like it's sort of peculiar angles, uh, that's, that's why. I've, I've got a handle stuck in my face, you know. Right, so it's close wound, and you'll see that the, the, the sections are different sizes. So you've got, you know, uh, more turns on this one than this one, more turns on this one than this one. And it's not lump wound. It's not, uh, you know, the turns aren't piled up on top of each other. Now, I have in the past used lump wound RF chokes and haven't had a problem with them. They were uh, commercial ones that I got from the Admiralty uh, in the UK and uh, didn't have any problem with those at all. But apparently, you can get some sort of internal uh, capacitive effects that you can get hot spots in them, um, which, of course, if they get hot enough, of course, they'll burst into flames with this, uh, with this sort of thing. So, if you're going to wind an anode choke, <clears throat> wind it like that, close wound, sections, different size sections, nice ceramic former, and this RF choke is the plate choke, or the anode choke. Actually I should write RF choke on there, RFC, but that's that, uh, that inductor there, that anode, anode RF choke. Now, the cathode choke now this is the one that uh, this is the one that's either bifolar or bifolar or whatever it is. This uh, this twin inductor arrangement here that provides this really high impedance to the RF. So the RF comes along and goes <coughs> brick wall that way. I'll go that way. Looks like this. And all the bifolar wound means is you get two two lengths of enamelled copper wire. Uh, same length. You hold them next to each other 
and then you just wind them onto you wind them onto a ferrite rod. So they're just next to each other and you wind them onto the, the ferrite rod. Stick a bit of clear insulating um, or uh, heat shrink uh, tube over it and it makes a, makes, a nice little, uh, makes a nice little choke. So that's the Biffler choke. That's that, uh, that thing there, like that. Keeps the, RF, uh, keeps the RF in the valve and away from, uh, away from the heater transformer and <coughs> what have you. Now, these, uh, these capacitors here, these 0.01s, so you've got RF in, it's coming in from your L tuning circuit, just look like that. It's one of those, one KV, 0.01 capacitor. So one of those goes there. Another one goes across the across those two connections there, pretty close to the valve base. And I've got a couple of capacitors uh, to go down here as well. One there and one there, just to just to decouple any RF out of uh, out of the out of the heater transformer, out of the bias supply. Um, just to keep that uh, to keep that nice. Now, um, these variable capacitors here will be uh, sort of a reasonable size. That one will be quite small. Uh, this inductor will be quite small. That one will probably be fairly large. I don't know. Might be something that sort of size. Fairly decent size uh, gauge wire. Uh, variable capacitors will be. Well, maybe for uh, for this one here, I might get away with using this. I don't know if the spacing will be will be adequate for that kind of power level. Um, but uh, mm, yeah, I think it might be worth a try. The the good thing about this capacitor is that it's 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 got two completely isolated sections, 220 puff uh, picofarad per section. So I could have a switch, so I could switch in, you know, so, so this could either be 220 or 440 picofarad. If, uh, going from band to band, uh, having that switchable could be, uh, could be useful. Um, if it's not big enough, I'll just have to use a bigger cap or get a vacuum cap, but that's what I've got in mind for that capacitor, uh, that capacitor there. Now when it comes to the valve, The valve is a, a metal ceramic triode. Actually, I didn't write on there, did I? Um, just write on there that it's a it's a GS thirty five B. That's an RF choke. Just for uh, I don't know clarity, maybe. If there is such a thing with a VK six CS video. Um, Oh, there's probably uh, uh, probably a bit more, uh, probably another decoupling cap down there as well that I've left off, but I won't worry about that, and uh, some clamping diodes, but um, basically that's a circuit, uh, uh, literally. So, what does the GS35 look like? Looks like that. There we go. So, uh, so that's the valve. Anode radiator. It's got 1500 watt anode dissipation, which means the difference between the uh, the power you're putting in and the power that's coming out can't be more than 1500 watts. Um, there you go. You can see through the anode radiator right through to the whiteboard. Got to blow air through there at uh, 87 cubic feet a minute. I think it is. Keep it cool. Um, and there's the grid. There's the cathode filament. There's the filament. I'm going to have to wrap this up because this only records in blocks of 20 minutes and it says 19, 20, 19 minutes and 21 seconds. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting. And uh, as always, catch you next time. Thanks for watching. I think I said that, didn't I?